July 9, our battle summer. May it be our first and our last, so called. After all, we have not had any of the horrors of war. Mary Chestnut. July 16. It begins to look warlike, and we shall probably have a chance to pay our southern brethren a visit upon the sacred soil of Virginia very soon. I hope we shall be successful and give the rebels a good pounding. Elisha Hunt Rhodes. On July 16th, the Volunteer Union Army of 37,000 men marched into Virginia. Their aim? To cut the railroad at Manassas, then move on at last to Richmond. Washington Star. The scene from the hills was grand. Regiment after regiment was seen coming along the road and across the long bridge, their arms gleaming in the sun. Cheer after cheer was heard as regiment greeted regiment, and with the martial music and sharp, clear orders of commanding officers, it made a combination of sounds very pleasant to the ear of a Union man. To stop the Union invasion, 22,000 Confederate troops had moved north from Richmond, commanded by General Beauregard, who knew in advance the Federals were coming. Rose Greenow, a prominent socialite in Washington and a Confederate spy, had alerted him. Now, Beauregard made his headquarters in Wilmer McLean's farmhouse. The Confederates formed a meandering eight-mile line along one side of Bull Run Creek. They were less than 25 miles from Washington. And there they waited. Hundreds of Washingtonians in holiday mood rode out to Manassas hoping to see a real battle. Some brought field glasses, picnic baskets, bottles of champagne. We saw carriages which contained civilians who'd driven out from Washington to witness the operations. A Connecticut boy said, there's our senator. And some of our men recognized other members of Congress. We thought it wasn't a bad idea to have the great men from Washington come out to see us thrash the Rebs. Private James Tinkham. 